So one of the things I'm still trying to figure out is what is the best way to do forms and form validation in Next.js? Because I try to do everything as much with React Server components, but at some point you have to dive into a client component because you have to have like loader state here. You might want to show some type of message here that says what fields are wrong. You might want to add validation errors to all your fields. Maybe you want to show a toast and have that pop up saying, please correct any form fields. And I've tried different things. I've tried just next server actions with next safe action, which is a library I talked about in a previous video. I've tried just using use form hook and just using the Zod validator with that. But there's another thing that I want to kind of talk about in this video, and that is using something called conform. So conform, I think was originally for remix, but overall I've been getting a lot of suggestions that I should try it out. And this is the video where I'm going to try it out. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to kind of understand the next JS walkthrough. They have some examples of how you can use the next JS. And we are going to first create an actions.ts file. Go ahead and copy this code. And I'm going to go and make an actions.ts. Paste that in. Now, I think I'm missing some stuff. Uh, conform to Zod. I think I may have to install this. So I'm going to say npm add. Go ahead and type that in. And I already have Zod set up, so I don't have to worry about that. So for the schema file, let's just put it here in a schema file and follow the you know, the docs like they tell you to, it means I should probably import that back in. And then down here we have the form.tsx, which I'm gonna use uh, my page. So let's just copy all this and let's go to page. And we're gonna go like this. We'll say export default, we'll say other page. And what is this complaining about? So it can't find conform to react. Um, do I need to install that? Didn't I just install that a second ago? Um, and then log in and this, so let's delete those and we're going to auto import those. This should come in from the actions. The schema should come in from there. And what is this? React DOM use form state. I'm not really sure how to get the canary types fixed. I'm sure it's something simple. So leave a comment if you're smarter than me, which you probably are, and you can let me know. But otherwise, I think it should still work. So let's go to the page. I'm going to click login. And notice that when it validates, it puts required underneath these fields. The styling here looks awful, so we should probably come in here and like style this a little bit. Space Y8, all this, okay. Here we go, a little bit of spacing. And then for the error fields, let's just say here, I'll say class name, text of extra small, and then text red of 400. Let's try that out. And then also I'll say like container MX auto, I should bring it in a little bit. Okay, that's good enough. Now. When I type into this, let's just type in like webdevcody at gmail.com or the next input, notice that that automatically clears out. Same with the password. If I unfocus this, it'll clear out. And then when I submit it, notice that worked fine and it called the action, which just redirects back to the dashboard. So my first thoughts, um, this is a lot less code than what I've seen with my other Zod forms. Like I do believe I have like a delete account button which if you look through this code where I'm using like Zod, this is what it looks like. I have like a form and then I have like this thing that has a form inside of it and then I have like a form field and then I have to take the, the field information here and I have to like spread that on the input. It's not the best developer experience. Like and then up here we have like this use form. We have to infer some stuff and pass in the schema. It just feels kind of gross, but it is what it is. If this is what you want to do with like the React hook form, this is kind of the approach that you take. And if you're following with Shad CN, this is the form component that they're gonna, they're gonna tell you how to do it with. So I've always been kind of hesitant about like, is this really like the way we should be doing forms? Cause it just feels kind of gross to me. Um, versus if you compare it to this, this feels a little cleaner to read through. So I, I will give it this, I think conform has a nicer look to it. Granted, most of the stuff that you saw on the other page, like that was just abstracted away. Like form message is an abstraction away from some type of shared state that's probably inside of this form field component. There's probably like a provider that's being used to set some state so this thing can load it. Versus this, all the state you need is just gonna come directly back from fields. So now some other cool stuff is that you can change when stuff like revalidates. So let's just say like um, on, on submit. So if you wanna change it to only revalidate the forms after you submit, you can do that. Let's just go back to a new group. Um, actually no, we need to go back to other, let's go here. I'm gonna go ahead and log in, type some stuff in, and now I'll notice that when I unclick, like stuff doesn't revalidate, which maybe that's something that you want for your use case. I don't know, but now when I click log in, 
Uh, okay, this actually validated. Does Gmail's required? That's pretty nice, but one thing I don't like is, is there a way to get a loading state? Because when I click on the login button, I'm not seeing any type of spinner, which makes sense because like uh, they were using a button over here. Let me find out where they're using the button. Where does this button come from? This comes from... Yeah, I don't know. They got a random button here, capital B, but there's no import anywhere in this file to explain where that button component comes from. Okay, so you still end up having to like probably go down here and like create a a button for the form loading state. So I'm going to say function button and then we're going to say const um, use form status. Use form status is another one we need. Um, go ahead and import this. It's probably going to complain that it can't find it. I don't know what's wrong with my project. Like this stuff should be able to get imported, but it just can't find it. Let's just import that directly from where does that need to come from? React DOM? Anyway, this is how you do it in Next.js. You can return a button. And basically, if the form is currently submitting, you'll get a pending state. And then you can show a loader based on that. And for the on click, we definitely don't want the action there. Let's just get rid of that. All right, so let's use the button like this. And, um, and this thing doesn't take in children. So we need to make that thing take in some children like this. Go ahead and import this. Ask children there. Okay, all this because I want to basically show a spinner. So if I were to do some stuff, type in some random password, click login, does it change to a loading button? And it did. It's very quick. I don't know if you saw that. So I should probably go back to the action and then I should just like sleep for a little bit. I'll just say like sleep for one second and then go ahead and just do that. So now if I were to go ahead and type in the information again, Login, it shows loading, and there you go. So there is my really sloppy overview of the conform library. Overall, I think it's a pretty cool library. You might want to check it out if you want to find an easier way to make forms and do validation with your forms. It seems like it's a little bit more concise, which is pretty nice. And if I could fix these React DOM issues, I think I wouldn't have uh, so many complaints. So yeah, at this point, I'm kind of debating if I should use this as a default in my starter kit. I think it's nice, and I'm trying to compare it against the use form hook. Like, what are the benefits of sticking with use form hook over, you know, doing it with conform? I don't really know yet. I haven't really thought too much into it. But this is another approach that you can do to form validation. And uh, yeah, that's all I want to share with you all. So hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good day, and happy coding.